PFF Rewind time here, Sam. Your favorite feature, we're going to look back at the 2013 Seahawks. We were just young pups over here at PFF when that was happening. But they're in the news right now. Doug Baldwin's retiring. Cam Chancellor officially retired. So let's go back in time and check out PFF premium stats and discuss just how good that 2013 Super Bowl champion Seahawks team really was. You ready to do it? Yep, sounds good. Let's dive in, see what we can see. All right, even though the Seahawks were known for defense, let's start on the offensive side of the ball. We're talking about year two of Russell Wilson's career and Marshawn Lynch being one of the best running backs in the entire NFL. Check out that 90.8 overall grade, 90.7 rushing grade. We had an offensive line that wasn't necessarily great, but Marshawn Lynch just, just kept on churning, kept making guys miss and creating yards after contact. Yeah, this was the peak of Marshawn Lynch. You know, this was not that far removed from when he was back in Buffalo looking, you know, good, not great. The Seahawks acquire him and then suddenly beast mode turns up and you get this absolutely phenomenal ball carrier, a guy that became really the, the feature of this offense for a few years. The fun part about this passing game though, the investment in Sidney Rice at wide receiver, Percy Harvin at wide receiver, these guys were supposed to be the game changers, but it turns out it's Doug Baldwin and Jermaine Curse as the top two guys along with Golden Tate. That's the trio that was really moving the ball through the air, especially now Baldwin, we talk about him retiring at his best. His ability to create vertical threats in the slot, his releases off the line of scrimmage, he was really a fantastic player. Yeah, it's interesting. The Seahawks invested in this sort of former Minnesota Vikings offense. You had Sidney Rice, who had that phenomenal season with the Vikings for that one year with Brett Favre. You had Percy Harvin, who for a period was one of the most dynamic uh, weapons in all of football. They even had the Vikings backup quarterback, Tavares Jackson, back, backing up Russell Wilson. With that 86 grade right there. Right, yeah, look at that. Good. Tavares and his 42 total snaps that year, dominating. Context. Context is, is king. But it wasn't those guys. They were never able to recapture. Sidney Rice injuries just destroyed his career, and Percy Harvin was never able to be that guy, really, for the Seahawks. It became Doug Baldwin, who was their best receiver pretty much for the entirety of the, the Russell Wilson era right up until, you know, this offseason where he's sadly looking like he's retiring. He's hanging him up. And then the other story of the well, Russell Wilson's entire career really is he hasn't played in behind a great offensive line. And when you start to look at where the offensive linemen ranked, we had Michael Bowie up there with some pretty good grading on his, in his 10 games. But beyond that, Breno Giacomini, Russell Okung in the 60s, James Carpenter, low 60s, Paul McQuiston, he played a lot of snaps to be down there uh, in the 50s. So it wasn't the best offensive line. You know, so it wasn't really the, the O-line moving the ball. It was Russell Wilson, Marshawn Lynch, and all those playmakers. Right, pretty much a mainstay of Russell Wilson's career. They've never had the best offensive line in the world in front of him. Though, honestly, in the pantheon of bad Seahawks offensive lines, that wasn't a terrible one. All right, let's go to the defensive side of the ball because these guys were so good these few years in Seattle. The Legion of Boom on the back end, all of those great defensive linemen rushing the passer that they were they were so good that Seattle's entire coaching tree dispersed around the NFL and they're trying to duplicate this scheme what made this scheme work and what made it so special with what the Seahawks were able to do back then compared to what teams are trying to duplicate right now well this was this fun scheme remember they had um, Red Bryant as your sort of big base defensive end then they would swap him out and bring in the pass rusher when they went to obvious pass rushing situations. So they kind of had, you know, Red Bryant was this 300 pound plus monster. It looked more like a, a nose tackle than an edge defender, but he would play on those base downs for the Seahawks. Then they would kick down, and you look at the number of people that were able to generate a serious amount of pressure. You had Michael Bennett with 79 pressures, Brandon Meebane, 33, Cliff Averill, 64. We had what, one, two, three, Four more guys that were able to have 20 or more total pressures over the season and a bunch more that had double digits as well. This was a team that could get pressure pretty much across the board and then obviously lock it down on the back end, which helped that with that Legion of Boom secondary. Yeah, this was Chris Clemens with 51. They got, you know, his pretty much only role was get up the field, get after the quarterback. We have all these debates here about coverage and pass rush and the idea that coverage is a little bit more important than pass rush, but the optimum balance is having great both pass rush and coverage and that's exactly what they exemplified that secondary that year though Richard Sherman at his peak 90.2 overall grade uh, 
completion percentage of only 48, passer rating of 31 into his coverage. This is when he was picking off all those passes, eight interceptions, eight pass breakups. And then Cam Chancellor. I mean, you've got the prototype outside corner in Sherman. Cam Chancellor, the prototype strong safety. And, of course, Earl Thomas, the prototypical free safety, 89.1 coverage grade for him. This is what everybody is trying to duplicate on the back end now. It's really tough, to, though, to find three prototypes because Seattle had them perfectly. And then you have a guy like Byron Maxwell who's – thrust in there and has a fantastic season himself. Yeah, you had Byron Maxwell, you had Brandon Browner as well, back kind of before teams figured out exactly how to exploit him. He was able to just get physical with receivers. They hadn't really worked out exactly how vulnerable he was to those uh, shifty guys that could break inside and, and just expose his lack of lateral agility. This group was extremely physical and they were able to sort of, you know, cheat any deficiencies they had in overall general coverage terms deep down the field because that front seven was so uh, dominating and so apt at getting pressure you know those things really do they are it is a symbiotic relationship you know whether you would rather coverage first or pass rush first when you have both working together they each help the other side of the equation out now let's check out this linebacker unit because this is back when it wasn't all about nickel defenses this is way back in 2013 sam uh it, it feels like the dark ages compared to the nfl today but uh you actually had three three down linebackers. You had Malcolm Smith, who eventually became, out of all this group, Super Bowl MVP. You had K.J. Wright. You had Bobby Wagner. Three more guys who just fit their role extremely well. Guys who stayed on the field, played the run, and covered on the back end. It really was just a fantastic defense, top to bottom, even though the edge rushers, the pass rushers, and the secondary always seemed to get most of the credit. Yeah, and this was Cam Chancellor at his peak as well, essentially acting as an auxiliary linebacker at times in the box. You had Bobby Wagner leading the way with 62 defensive stops. Those are those tackles in and around the line of scrimmage, the important ones that are actually wins for the defense, not just ending a play after the offense has had some success, but Cam Chancellor was right up there as well with 40 of those in the box as that extra linebacker and really adding to their formid uh, formidable defense at the second level. So there you have it. It's your PFF Rewind 2013 Seattle Seahawks edition. Of course, if you want all of this great information, it's all part of Premium Stats, part of your PFF Elite package.